As SpaceX Starship steals the spotlight through upgrades and testing, we know that the day SpaceX's operational vehicles like the Falcon and Dragon become obsolete is not far away. That doesn't mean SpaceX has completely given up on taking its current line of vehicles to a new ultimate frontier, however. Yes, we're talking about Dragon XL. As introduced a few years ago, this unique spacecraft fired the whole space community up with its vital role in NASA's lunar exploration mission. However, the news surrounding it quickly faded afterward, raising suspicions that it might become a forgotten project. Luckily, NASA has proven that wrong as the space agency has already brought the project back from the dead. And more excitingly, it has emerged with a new design. Find out everything in today's episode. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. As part of NASA's long-term sustainable lunar exploration goals, the Lunar Gateway Project is underway. To ensure the Gateway's operation, NASA has chosen SpaceX as a reliable supplier for cargo transportation. SpaceX is the first company NASA selected for its Gateway Logistics Services program. This program, modeled after the Commercial Cargo Program for the International Space Station, will fund cargo transportation to and from the Lunar Gateway in order to support crewed missions to the Gateway and the lunar surface. To meet these requirements, SpaceX is developing a modified, single-use version of its Dragon 2 spacecraft, called Dragon XL, that will feature increased propellant storage expanded cargo space, and other design changes. It will be launched on the company's Falcon Heavy rocket to deliver several tons of cargo to Gateway and remove trash. Based on the rare pieces of information, we know that the big size spacecraft would weigh around 15 to 16 tons, roughly 33,000 to 35,000 pounds, at liftoff and likely require a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch for each mission to the moon. SpaceX notes that the vehicle will be optimized to carry more than five metric tons of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to Gateway in lunar orbit. In the design and structure, the modified Dragon will lack aerodynamics, so it's going to launch inside a fuel-size cargo fairing, unlike the existing Dragons. Another difference is the service section, housing the propellant tanks, ECLSS tanks, and most of the Draco thrusters, is not at the back, it's going to be at the front. It's likely that it's going to use the same docking hardware, propulsion power, and avionics that are already flying in Crew Dragon. More importantly, it is designed for not returning to Earth, so there will be no heat shield. Additionally, a modified structure is needed to protect the docking port. Dragon XL would use non-cryogenic propellant and is baseline to spend at least 6 to 12 months at a time at the gateway. NASA has also studied the possibility of using Dragon XL as a crew cabin or bathroom to temporarily relieve Gateway's extremely cramped habitable volume. Progress on the NASA SpaceX project is slow as more than a year after awarding the contract to SpaceX, NASA has yet to formally start that contract as it performs a broader review of its Artemis program. After two years of delay, in 2023, NASA turned it on giving the go-ahead for that first logistics mission needed to support Artemis IV, the first Artemis mission to use the Gateway, currently scheduled for 2028. We spent all of last year working very collaboratively with SpaceX. Mark Wees, manager of NASA's Deep Space Logistics Program, said, but noted that Gateway's logistics needs have evolved since the contract was awarded, creating unspecified constraints. This led to changes in SpaceX's approach to delivering cargo, including refining the Dragon XL design and examining cargo configurations and other capabilities that could be enabled by the spacecraft. They're starting to retool their architecture, Wise said, with the agency in the final phases of a contract modification. I'm going to leave it to them to unveil some of the changes that are coming, but we've worked through some significant changes on what this logistics module and logistics spacecraft looks like. At the time I made this report, those changes remain SpaceX's secret. We said NASA and SpaceX are working towards a system requirements review later this year as part of plans for an initial mission to support Artemis IV. 
Along with Dragon, NASA also leaves the door open for using the company's Starship vehicle for cargo delivery in the future. We are all for enabling evolution, he said. We talked to them about Starship evolution and how it all worked together. But we're not there yet because it's still in a development phase. Through the Human Landing System, HLS program, NASA has committed to investing at least $3 billion in SpaceX's Starship program to develop a crewed lunar lander, a reusable launch vehicle, and the necessary refueling infrastructure. With minimal modifications, this existing Starship architecture could transport dozens of tons of pressurized cargo to cislunar space, lunar orbit, the gateway, the lunar surface, or just about anywhere else NASA wants. Utilizing this investment could significantly lower development costs, foster a robust deep space supply chain, and far surpass the cargo capabilities of the Dragon XL. Despite the potential advantages of using Starship, there are technical hurdles to overcome before it can seamlessly replace the Dragon XL for gateway resupply missions. As stated, the Dragon XL was designed with non-cryogenic propellant for extended stays of 6 to 12 months at the gateway. Starship, on the other hand, utilizes cryogenic propellant that tends to boil off, making long-term docking more challenging. Furthermore, Starship's mass, 100 to 200 tons, significantly exceeds Gateway's visiting vehicle mass limit, while even Dragon XL risked running into Gateway's visiting vehicle mass limit of just 15 to 16 tons. While these issues are likely resolvable, Starship is not an immediate perfect solution. At present, SpaceX is directing Starship toward a more important role, Starship HLS. When NASA selected SpaceX as the HLS contractor, the initial Starship HLS design resembled a standard Starship, about 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide, without aerodynamic flaps or heat shields. Astronauts were to use an elevator to reach the lunar surface, with the crew cabin in the upper half and propellant in the lower half. It would have six Raptor engines but would swap its fins used for atmospheric entry on Earth, useless in the lunar near vacuum, for landing legs. The payload bay was designed to hold 1,000 cubic meters and carry over 100 metric tons to the moon after in-orbit refueling. To do that, however, the vehicle must refuel several times in orbit. This requires a handful of tanker starships that would fill a fuel depot starship waiting in orbit, which would then refuel the HLS after its launch. Subsequent designs have included modifications like increased height, five large solar arrays for power, and small landing thrusters. The crew quarters are divided into two decks. The upper deck serves as the main workspace and private quarters. This spacious area has a 40-foot ceiling to help astronauts adjust to lunar gravity. It includes five bedrooms inspired by the ISS layout, but with a horizontal orientation, and can be expanded to accommodate up to 20 bedrooms. The central control room has four seats with touchscreens and large wall displays serving as virtual windows. Key features include a life support outlet, storage rack, shoe cover storage, a system switchboard, and an emergency exit. The lower deck, accessed via a 15-step staircase, houses life support equipment like the ECLSS, research gear, lunar rovers, and supplies. It is expected to also house the restroom facilities. The floor of the lower deck is curved to match the pressure vessel dome, but is optimized for crew movement. 2024 isn't the first time Starship HLS renderings have been revealed. During the Flight 4 countdown, images of the Starship HLS airlock interior leaked, exciting SpaceX enthusiasts. The airlock, essential for transferring between different atmospheric pressures, was mocked up for pre-launch tests under NASA's Artemis III, appearing pristine and temporary. The lunar lander's interior, like other SpaceX products, features a simple, luxurious design with a white color scheme and walls resembling white sofa pads, providing a soft interface with spacesuits. The sidewall likely contains pressurization and hardware to authentically simulate real conditions. 
The control panel features notable buttons with a red border, indicating important functions tested on April 30th, when astronauts Doug Wheelock and Peggy Whitson practiced interacting with the controls while wearing gloves, ensuring accessibility while wearing spacesuits. These buttons include standard push-to-talk and microphone plug-ins. Regarding the progress, NASA praised SpaceX for making good progress on their contract to develop crewed lunar landers. SpaceX is not shy about advertising their success, he said, referring to the series of Starship Super Heavy test flights. The flight demonstrations they have been doing have been phenomenal. He added the company has been making progress on other aspects of the Starship HLS design, such as tests of the Starship airlock and elevator using crews wearing prototypes of Axiom's lunar spacesuits. The same is true of Blue Origin, he said noting both the successful first launch of the company's new Glenn rocket in January, as well as testing of landing legs for its Blue Moon lander. For the year ahead, a key milestone will be an in-space propellant transfer demonstration by SpaceX, a key technology needed for sending Starship to the moon. They have shown us a plan to get to a propellant transfer this year, NASA said, a schedule that could be affected by the Starship anomaly on its most recent test flight on January 16th. SpaceX's first flight in 2025 is crucial for advancing fully reusable rockets, which is a prerequisite for their Starship propellant transfer demonstration campaign, planned between March and summer 2025. This campaign aims to achieve the first ship-to-ship -ship docking and propellant transfer in orbit, a critical demonstration for the Artemis program's human landing system HLS which relies on orbital refueling to send a lunar ship to the moon. NASA has awarded SpaceX over $4 billion to develop and execute two human landing missions as part of the Artemis program, aiming to return humans to the moon. Starship Flight 7, SpaceX's seventh test flight of its Starship rocket, launched on January 16, 2025, from Starbase in Texas. The mission was a mix of success and failure. The Super Heavy Booster, Booster 14, was successfully caught by the launch tower's chopstick arms during its return to the launch site, marking the second successful catch. The launch began nominally, with all 33 engines working to send it on its way. Hot staging separation was successful. Unfortunately, the flight couldn't avoid the failure. The Starship upper stage, Ship 33, experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly, exploded during its ascent. Telemetry was lost at T plus 826, with the vehicle at an altitude of 146 kilometers. A series of cascading engine shutdowns occurred on ship 33 during its ascent burn, beginning at T plus 739. The plan to deploy 10 Starlink satellite simulators was scrubbed. Debris from the explosion rained over the Turks and Caicos Islands, 